A very good morning to you. Thank you for waking up and joining us for the 2013 edition of the Comrades Race. My name is Valen Kirtley. Myself, as well as a legendary and expert commentary team, will be bringing you the race. There's lots of excitement, there's lots of fun here on the start line of the youth run, which really kickstarts all of the road running festivities around the Comrades Marathon. Hello! Their mission is to provide educational support and care for vulnerable children and orphans. They also provide after-school support for children between 7 and 18 years old while also running a feeding scheme. Behind me, I've got this beautiful electric blue Toyota Etios, which has been the prize for our SMS competition. As much as Claude Mishiwa was the front man for a very long time, really what happened between positions 2 and 10 is quite a story all on its own. Jonas Bood from Sweden was 15 second place at Drummond. He ended in second position. That's unheard of. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to our live broadcast of the event. My name is Valen Kirtley, and it's great to have you in our company. Definitely going to get myself a chastity belt this winter. So is that the new thing to have then, Mika? All right, well, let's uh, continue with our broadcast here on SABC3. He spoke there a little bit about um, about jet explorer Anthony Delpeche going for a fifth win here at the July. There are a number of July winners, jockeys that know what it's like actually to win the July, but he's sounding super confident, as he has done for the last week. In the 42.2 kilometer marathon, we've got the defending champions, Brighton Chipere, who last year ran a 2.28, as well as Mushineta Guata, also from Zimbabwe. She ran a 3.10, winning the women's title. Guys, these are not times that are going to shake the ground, but that's because of the route. <laughs> Very good morning to everybody at home. Yeah, well, let's get clarity on that story because on Tuesday morning we were greeted with the news that the Soweto Marathon has been cancelled. The Soweto Marathon Trust blamed the ASA and their president, James Evans. Athletics South Africa then rebutted, saying in a press release that the Trust had no authority to cancel the race and it would, in fact, go ahead. On the line from Cape Town is ASA President James Evans. A very good morning to you, Mr. Evans. So, will the 2013 Soweto Marathon, earmarked for the 2nd of November, in fact, go ahead? There was a me memorandum of understanding that was signed by yourself, by Benelis Sindani, as well as CGA President uh, Mr. James Malloy ahead of last year's race, saying that the Soweto Marathon Trust will organize the Soweto Marathon starting in 2013. Danny Yordan and Mandla Shuz Maziboka are expected to go head-to-head -head this weekend in a bid to succeed the outgoing South African Football Association presidents Kirsten Nematandani at the SAFA elective conference. It's going to be taking place in Halfontaine in four ways. And we're now joined in studio by Shuz Maziboko. Why could you not carry out the development vision that you now want to take into your presidency, why couldn't you carry that out in your last position? Tyler Hamilton is in the country. He had to speak about going from Olympic champion to doping cheat. It's a storyline, unfortunately, that's becoming a well-worn one, it seems. He was side-by-side side clearing the way for Lance Armstrong for the first of Armstrong's three tour wins. Then weeks after winning his very own gold at the Olympics in Greece, he was popped. That's the phrase that he coins in his book. Last year, Hamilton released his memoir, The Secret Race, which became the New York Times' bestseller and was the recipient of the prestigious William Hill Sports Book of the Year. You became so obsessed with revealing the truth, almost as obsessed as winning the Tour de France. Where is this obsession from, this obsession to tell the truth? Tell everybody exactly about your yeah. doping schedules yeah. and what you took. Well, I mean, I think, I think deep down it was like I needed to, I needed to do it for myself. If you think back to <coughs> the Olympic Games in Greece, uh, to the birthplace of the Olympic Games, standing there with the olive branch around your head and that gold medal, yeah, and everything that's followed after that, would you still have... 